night. <clears throat> and once again, starting off on Catalina. Uh, series 2 of the night show, you say. Uh, once again, starting off on Catalina, we have a yellow Zerg player. Down here in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, I believe he got signed to MYI recently. Mm -hmm. It is Petraeus. And in the northern position, the Protoss going for that Nexus first. He is indeed from Flipside Tactics. It is Puck. Uh huh. Nexus first. And it's going to do pretty well against a fairly safe pool hat from Petraeus. Uh, Petraeus obviously wanting to play things a little bit, um, you know, a little bit safer. Uh, worried about yeah. it potentially any kind of cheese or something coming out of puck, but with that pool first, he's safe against it. But he's not. I mean, I mean, he's safe against the Nexus first. It's just the question of uh, whether or not the econ lead puck actually gains from it is going to hurt Petraeus in the long run. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of ways that this can play out. Now, unfortunately for Pet, he did indeed scout the wrong way, which shouldn't be a huge, huge deal, especially since, like you were talking about, he did go pool first, just in case there was any sort of cheesy, cheesy, silly play coming out. Which, I mean, hey, you know, it's Protoss. People will say what they will about, you know, whether or not Protoss likes to play straight up. But in this particular game, it's on the macro end, as you were talking about, for Puck. And Petraeus is going to see that. He's going to be a little bit upset based on that, but he's not going to be... I don't think he'll be too upset. He does have the Lings heading out across the map. Yeah, and there's the potential for a little bit of damage done there, for sure. Uh, I mean, it look, yeah, they get a pylon cancel and might get a probe or two. But yeah. I feel like this is a price Puck is probably willing... Well, maybe not willing, but okay with paying to get away with the Nexus first uh, in, you know, a fairly, fairly good fashion. Yeah, and Pet, he's like, all right, you went Nexus first. Well, I guess I'll go fast three hatch, get himself those three hatcheries up and running. He's also following up with plenty of drones. It's not like he's doing any sort of two base all in. He's not doing any sort of craziness like that. Now, the Zealot is trying to chase around these Lings, playing, you know, just tag with them, trying to slice them to bits. And the Lings technically make it into the main base, but they're a little bit damaged. Puck is going to pull his workers off the line. Maybe a little bit of lost mining time there. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. And the first stalker is out. The one probe may go down. No. Oh, it's going to be close, but some nice control from Puck running his probe from one patch to another. Wow. will save it. Is that yeah. is that legitimately? Wow, zero unit yeah. loss for Puck. He didn't no even lose his... Puck. Yeah. Wow. That was really, really nice. Uh, fantastic micro there. And I mean... It's not, this is not like game winning stuff, but this could be coming out of Puck. Five gateways going down. He has, of course, already got one. So going to really fast six gateways off Nexus first, completely kind of switching his direction from uh, Econ to Aggression. And uh, this could catch Puck off guard. Did, oh, sorry, Petraeus off guard. Did Petraeus see the Chrono and Warp Gate? I'm not actually sure, but I mean, he hasn't yeah. really gotten too m good of a look <laughs> at that uh, recent edition of the gateways. He does have an overlord heading in, which won't really make it into the main base where the majority of those gateways are, unfortunately, for mm -hmm. Pet. Not in time. He's just not going to really know that this is coming. He's going to have lots of coming. time to think about it, though. Yeah, that's true. Little pause coming out of Petraeus. Uh, of course, he hasn't, like, you know, seen, ah, uh, somebody's telling him something. Uh oh, uh, uh. that is uh, that is a little bit rude. <laughs> the person who uh, messed him, especially since there's actually not an oracle in the way. <laughs> what a dick! But anyway, uh, yeah, it's uh, an oracle's not what he should be worried about because Puck is, of course, going for a six gate. He's got his proxy pylon down, and you know, last couple of gateways being warped in, and uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, everything. I hope. I hope that Petraeus also forgets about this uh, oracle that isn't coming. It would be kind of <laughs> funny if he just threw down like six spore crawlers and you're just like, oh, all right, I guess you could listen to the guy who sent you a message and is now going to be even more responsible for how your situation is in this game. But he did just see those four zealots get warped in. He spotted the proxy pylons and he potentially will be going for a bit of a scout. He does have an overlord placed near the main base of Puck. He's just running through the main base with a separate overlord. So he is going to be potentially getting some looks in there. Now, the Ling's trying to get a bit of a surround there, and they're not quite able to do it. 
No, not quite enough links to fight this force, but Treas Court does have 10 more on the way along with three roaches. Mm hmm. But, I mean, there's still that proxy pile on that puck. And edging it ever closer, it's going to be. It's going to be a little bit tough for Petraeus to hold. This is uh, not really the position he wanted to find himself in. <clears throat> Behind this, Puck is actually not going fully all in with this. There's going to be a follow-up push coming with a Robo. So uh, Petraeus is going to have yeah. to make a pretty good hold here to be able to uh, hold both this and whatever's coming next. Yeah, now Puck does pull back at least for a little while. We'll see if he goes all the way back across the map. There is a fair number of Lings already out here looking for blood. And we do have three sentries being warped in, although I do believe, yeah, that's back at home. So potentially the sentries could get caught out of position and completely annihilated as the Lings are going to be coming in. There's the third Nexus getting dropped down. Lings do get a nice surround, but there's the force fields to save the sentries. The Zealots are on top of this and they are going to slice through those lanes without too much trouble. But Burrow is actually on the way from Pet, and he's adding on plenty more drones. Yeah, more sick moves coming out of Puck. And I will admit, a third base was just about the last thing I expected following up this uh, this kind of six gate. Because <clears throat> normally, like, the big gateway, that's not gateway pressure. Normally, if, if you're going to go for a third base, you go for, like, a four gate. Uh, maybe with plus one with your zealots and uh, try and take out a third base. Puck looked like he was gearing up to kind of end the game there, but then when Petraeus defended it, he just went back, took a third nexus. He's going to be able to defend it because he's got a ton of units. He's got quite a few sentries. And uh, yeah, well, overall, both players looking a little bit more even. I feel like Petraeus, uh, given that Puck tried to push out and wasn't able to really do any solid damage, I feel like Petraeus has kind of made up any kind of deficit he had from uh, Puck getting away with the Nexus first. But, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see how things go forward. The Burrow upgrade coming down is a bit interesting. Ah, Enduring Locusts. Yeah. I am not at all surprised to see this. I know how Petraeus plays. Yep. He loves himself some Swarm Host. Now, we do have the Twilight Council already completed for Puck, and uh, which means he should be adding on at some point or another. After he scouts, I should hope. He may end up going up to that Templar Archives, getting himself some Psy Storm, just to mix that in. Now, he also, I don't think, has mm -hmm. thrown down his Colossus tech, which, I mean, usually those are parts of the recipe that you want to defeat Swarm Host, so we'll have to see exactly where he decides to go. Blink is on the way, and he hasn't, of course, spotted the Swarm Host just yet. Oh, this Queen out in the middle of the map may end up getting cleaned up by Puck, we'll have to see. He is swinging in with that Warp Prism, trying to do what he can, when and where he finds the opportunities. But for now, back in the middle of the map, he's moving ever closer, and he's going to be getting an eye on that first Locust. He's going to know exactly what Pet is up to, and we do have that Robo on the way. Yeah, not too many Swarm Hosts out yet. Not really the critical mass that uh, makes them so scary. And yeah. try it. Oh, sorry, Puck even. I feel like he's... The problem is he's got all Zealots, and Zealots are about the worst thing to have versus Swarm Hosts. Um, I mean, still though, Puck can push through. Enduring Locust isn't done yet, so there's a much, much bigger downtime between waves, even without the fact that Puck is killing them all off. And the Force Field completely stopping these ropes, uh, sorry, these Locusts from getting the engagement, allow, basically allow Puck to pick off this, uh, this base if he wants to. Yeah, I mean, he's trying to just split his attention between these roaches, the locust, and the fourth base. He is going to be eventually cleaning up. There's the recall. He packed that mothership core around for a reason, and he pulls them all back to the third base. He's bought himself a bit of time. He's sniped himself a hatchery, and uh, he's going to be feeling all right about that. Now, of course, the fourth base is already up and running for Pet, which means he's going to be able to transfer the drones there A-OK. -okay. We got Templar Archives on the way as well. And up in the north part of the uh, of the screen there, and that Tunneling Claws is on the way. So we could end up seeing some sort of fun burrow-based things. And uh, wow, these swarm hosts are moving even closer. They're, they're miles off creep. Yeah, that's a little bit out of position. Of course, Puck without hmm. Blink isn't really able to take advantage of this. And uh, Treyas got a bunch of roaches and the swarm host at the locust coming in from the back but they are all going to expire and uh, now they kind of flip around to the front side a few force fields are going to have to uh, be used to uh, chase them off but now Petraeus is actually getting into the natural of Puck and Puck's being forced away oh my gosh he actually kills oh. that robo 
before the first Colossus comes out as well. So there's absolutely wow. no AoE on the field for Petraeus for a puck at all. And that's really, really bad. Wow, I can't believe he actually got that snipe. Now the ro the burrow is coming into effect as the roaches in the main base are hiding themselves underground. And we do have plus two weapons going to be completing up relatively soon as well as extended thermal lance. But what good is that going to do you when the Colossus is just now starting? Fortunately, there is an observer with the army on kind of the southern part over by the third base. But the locusts are continuing to do more and more damage, sniping off some sentries. And we've got more bases coming up for Pet. Now in the main base, the Roaches have gone back to town on these workers, killing off 14 of the probes so far in this game. And unfortunately for Puck, he is taking damage left, right, and center. He is not able to really lock this down in the way that he would like to. This defense is all over the place. Yeah, the roaches are at, like still not done. They're still all over the place. The, there is absolutely nothing to deal with these Stormhosts, although Puck has a couple stalkers kind of near blinking on top of them. Petraeus already yeah. has the units in position. He's going to pick off one or two of these swarm hosts, but by this stage, Petraeus is almost at the uh, kind of position where he could lose a good half of his swarm hosts and still be in a fantastic position. He's nearly doubling his opponent's army supply. He's been killing probes left, right, and center, pushing him towards the third base now. It looks like it's going to go down with a really wow. strong little, uh, I think, a roach force coming in towards that. Yeah, one Colossus comes out here, but Petraeus... It's going to be a bit tough for him to actually get on top of it, but he can kill that Nexus, and uh, that's Pock's only mining base right now. GG. Wow. Petraeus. Petraeus with some yeah, incredibly man, strong play. We are in game two with the uh, Red Protoss in the north from Flipside Tactics down 0-1 in this best of three. It is Puck. And his opponent is down in the bottom left-hand corner. Representing my insanity. The color yellow and the race zerg. It is Petraeus. Going for a really unusual kind of first hatch positioning here. Yeah. And I'm kind of wondering if Puck is going to be thrown off by this, because obviously these players are both good enough to be able to kind of count their opponent's uh, workers and see what should be down. And Puck should have caught on to the fact that Petraeus has 300 minerals missing in his build. And that is, of course, over his third base, which he has one of, so that's a thing. Uh, technically, it's not a third base, but it's his third base location. Um, and... Yeah, this is going to allow Petraeus to get up uh, much faster three bases than I think uh, Puck will realize, as it turns out. So this is going to be really, really nice for him. Yeah, Puck is just going to be a little bit confused. I mean, he will be seeing that natural go down, but he's going to be confused definitely about the timing there. Now he is sending his probe over on the right side. He will end up seeing that. So he's going to have a much better picture as to how that mm -hmm. opening went. He's going to be like, okay... You really just went hatch before pool with a relatively quick third. And, you know, now I know exactly what happened. It was just kind of in a weird spot. So now that Puck has filled in all the blank spaces, we'll have to see exactly how he decides to continue on with this. We've got speed mm -hmm. added on, and uh, the drones have been pulled out of gas for Petraeus. Yeah, it looks to me like Puck is actually going to be putting on some aggression with this, crawling out his warp gate a little bit. Uh, we'll have to see how many gates he ends up throwing down. I uh, kind of like, I think probably just three, uh, sorry, three gateways being added on to a total of four would probably be pretty good. Uh, we've got three total uh, building all completed right now. We'll see, uh, we'll see what he ends up doing when his warp gate finishes up. Uh, there's yeah, still room to add this more, but yeah, yeah it'll he be may interesting. Add he may end up adding on that fourth one, but he does have that pylon oh, yeah. in the middle of the map there, hidden down by his opponent's gold base. Zergling's going to be poking up. They're going to see the Zealot. They're going to see the wall off. And, I mean, maybe Petraeus won't get quite the idea that he would like. He does have Overlord's position to move in for that scout. You know, once we pass, like, that six-minute mark, he should be getting a relatively good idea of what exactly his opponent does have going on. And we got more drones coming out for Petraeus, so he's maybe even going to be looking at using that third base. It's not like we're going to be seeing the third base just used for hatch, or excuse me, the third hatch just used for larva. He's going to be nope. droning it up. He is going to be getting his eco rolling. 
and adding on an additional queen as well. Yeah. I mean, it's all looking great for Treyas, apart from the fact that Puck has now got Warbeat finished up. He's going up to five gateways. They're all morphing in now. And there's a proxy pylon down at that uh, probe you pointed out at the goal base location some time ago. So these elves are actually going to warp in on the high ground a little surprisingly. It means they're going to have a bit of a longer walk. And uh, yeah, they can saunter their way over to Petraeus' third base. And Petraeus is woefully unprepared for this. Yep, potentially on where these zealots end up moving out, we'll uh, we'll kind of determine the next couple of steps in this game. They're just now moving out, and again, it's it's weird that they ended up warping on Elm the high ground, but I guess it does keep them hidden that extra little bit longer. Three more zealots are being warped in. Oh, two more on the low ground there, which will give our total all the way up to like eight or nine zealots, which is going to be a pretty healthy number for Petraeus. And you were talking about some early pressure, uh, early pressure a little while ago, and. Well, it looks like Puck is delivering. Can Petraeus actually deal with it? This one queen nearly getting surrounded by even these slow zealots as there's the wow. GG. And I mean, he had a whole bunch of lings on the way, but... Deadwing, with the continuation of this series, we have spawning in the top right corner, our yellow Zerg player representing my insanity, he is Petraeus! Uh-huh, and his opponent is going to be spawning down here in the bottom left-hand corner of Deadwing, all the way over in cross positions. From Flipside Tactics, it is... And, uh, yeah, just a pretty normal gateway expand coming out of Puck. Yeah. Most I mean, likely. <clears throat> In not, fact, not almost all definitely. That surprising. Yeah, no, yeah, not at see, all. Yeah. It's like gateway expand, hatch first. Who's really surprised? It's Deadwing. There's a reasonable, there's a reasonable chance of it being cross spawn. So, yep. I mean, basically 50 50. Yeah. Um, some might say exactly 50 50. But, uh,. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't even have been surprised to see like a gateway nexus build come out of Puck on uh, Deadman, because as you say, it's basically the best macro map in the pool. I feel like, I think Inferno Pools is maybe a little larger, but it's Inferno Pools is just the layout makes it nowhere near as good to macro on as Deadwing. Deadwing, you get your three bases up basically for free. Um, I've actually even see, seen Protoss players expand to the third base location and build their first wall off across that big wide ramp because then you do get three bases you can get three bases a protoss player at like five or six minutes with that kind of build and uh it's ridiculous and yeah so petraeus though he isn't he's playing some nap a little bit with his hatch first but not too much still going uh still getting pool and gas before his third hatchery so uh yeah maybe he is playing for match map though maybe he's thinking he can get some kind of a uh, quick speed shenanigans and put a little bit of pressure on puck if puck decides to take a third base a little bit too quickly a little bit too greedily yeah i mean ling speed is one of those things that it's gotten in like 99 percent of all games and then there's that one percent where someone's going for maybe heavy roach play or whatever where they end up not getting it until the 20 minute mark or something like that but in this case, maybe Petraeus is just looking to get a bit of scouting out, get a bit of eyes on his opponents, because then that'll give him an idea of like, can I follow up with some crazy aggression? Should I maybe just macro into it even harder? Which we do see him adding on that third hatchery. Speed is going to be finishing up relatively soon. And of course, we've got that wall off at the natural, which is a little bit more common for Protoss than kind of the wall off at the third that you were talking about. But I mean, it's possible. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Anything's possible. This is Starcraft. Ooh. And, uh, ooh. Actually, I'm on block. Yeah, that's a... I mean, I'm kind of surprised. That's 25 minutes lost for Puck, and... Petraeus, it looks like, is... Uh... It does get cancelled, but Petraeus circles around once more. And, okay, no, there's a stalk around now, and the probe is just going to hold position, and... Oh, one ooh. of the lings actually gets in, though. <laughs> and this is exactly what Petra uh, Puck was trying to prevent. I... Think, oh. No, with speed, it's actually not going to get taken out by the stalker. So, a full scout <laughs> for the bargain, bargain price of two lings. Wow. Yeah, Pet is just going to be like, oh, all right, I guess I'll get a full scout off. I'm fine with that. I'll see exactly what you're doing. 
And I mean, he is going to confirm that it's not any sort of crazy shenanigans. Technically, he didn't scout the entirety of the main base, so maybe there was some hidden tech. But one of his overlords should be able to confirm everything that he didn't already know. He, I mean, there's there's hardly any spa spot that Pet hasn't seen, and he does have an overlord positioned near Puck's third base to potentially end up scouting that Puck has taken that third yeah. nexus. Well, I mean, what he did see is a uh, few gateways and warp gate not quite finished. So, I mean, to me, that kind of points towards a little bit of aggression uh, covering a third base. And uh, it looks like Puck actually didn't get to get a proxy part on that. Pardon yeah. me, so no particular aggression coming out. But still, these links that Petraeus has uh, brought out can be used just as well for, uh, for aggression of his own, trying to push in towards this third base. But... Yeah, I, I feel like it's not quite enough here uh, with the Mothership Core, with a couple of sentries and a photon cannon coming down. Petraeus isn't going to quite be able to actually make anything happen. So, you know, he can just macro up a bit, maybe look at a fourth base himself. Just uh, kind of go happily into... Ooh, that's interesting. He just cancelled... Uh, he, sorry, he just cancelled range attacks to go for melee instead. So, uh, mm. that's going to be fun. A little bit unusual seeing melee attacks in a... Uh, Protoss versus Zerg. Fast Mutalist style, maybe. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure where Petraeus is going to be going into this. We do have the Robo Facility on the way for Puck, though. A couple of roaches being added on, and he does have that probe out on the map. He's dropping down that proxy pylon that he was unfortunately not able to get down a little bit earlier. And uh, so he's going to be able to drop down that pylon. However, Petraeus has, for the majority of this game, had pretty darn good vision spread all the way across the map. He does have Lings running around here and there, and of course he does have the Overlords also in potential positions to move in and get that full scout off. But you were talking a little bit about some aggression earlier on. We could be seeing that exactly now from Puck. He's moving out. He's got himself a couple of Ooh. sentries. Ooh, the Roaches burrow. We could see some sort of... Uh, some sort of... Trap be played. No, the roaches do pop out there. There's the force fields on the high ground. They are some on the low ground, cutting away most of these roaches, keeping them at bay. But a lot of these units are still in range of the roaches for now. Puck has been able to mitigate the majority of the damage. The roaches have not done a terrible, terrible amount. And the Mothership Core is still here. And with no detection, Puck has just no answer to these roaches. And <laughs> actually has to recall out, so... Petraeus holding that with no problem whatsoever. Uh, the Dark Shrine is going to be the next stage in his aggressive plan. Uh, for Puck Petraeus, though, he's got he's got other ideas. The Mutalisk, um, sorry, the Spire even coming down. Yeah. It's difficult when Zerg buildings are not actually named after what you're going to produce with them. Uh, yeah, the Spire coming down, and uh, this is uh, this is going to work out really nicely for Petraeus because one of the difficulties with uh, going into fast Mutalis in uh, Protoss Zerg is you kind of die to basically any aggression. But Petraeus hasn't gone for fastest possible Mutalis. He's just built a few roaches, not even maxed on them, and uh, he, he's still actually going to do quite a lot of damage. These uh, this few roaches have gotten into the third base. They're going to burrow up, and they've killed off like a a probe and a couple zealots and Petraeus is going to be defending with aggression while he gets his mutilus up and then the mutilus can aggress with aggression and uh, <laughs> that's what they're best at yeah now we do have eventually Blink going to be finishing up five probes have gone down throughout the entirety of this game a sixth one being eliminated and more roaches pouring into this third base location can they get some serious economic damage done the answer might be yes We'll have to see if Dark Templars on the other side of the map will be the answer for Puck, as he does have some warping in there, but back in the natural and the main base of Puck, Roaches and Lings pushing even further forward. Here come the DTs, though, and, oh, more and more of these Roaches doing so much damage. 26 probes being cleaned up, 28 into the 30 count as the first couple of drones on the opposite side of the map are going down. Those Dem Dark Templars starting to work away at the forces on both ends and we do have that warp prism in the main base which could potentially be used to warp in more forces 14 mutalisks on the way and this is a weird weird game yeah it's certainly going uh, a turn for the unusual as things stabilize though Puck's going to, sorry Petraeus is going to be in a great position oh, oh he even manages to save the spire he's going to be in a great position because of that burrow upgrade he got earlier he saved all of his 
drones. And although he had... Oh, nice little burrowed ling, uh, ready to pop up in the main as and when. <laughs> but yeah, he managed to save all of his uh, probe drones nearly. And Puck, of course, lost quite a lot. So Puck, there's a significant possibility he can do a lot of damage with this, but he has to. Yep, for now, the Blink Stalker Micro is good enough. Plus two weapons is unfortunately not going to be quite finished up. And there's the GG. Puck will take the series 2-1 versus Petraeus. And that last final push was just too much for him.